Okay, we're here to talk about trapezoids and kites. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about, well, I shouldn't say first and foremost, we're going to talk about kites probably more, but trapezoids are important. Trapezoids are defined to be a four-sided figure with exactly one pair of parallel sides, okay? If it has two pairs of parallel sides, it's a parallelogram. It's not an inclusive definition where like, you know, a rectangle is a special parallelogram. A parallelogram isn't a special trapezoid. They're two distinct shapes. So if you have exactly one pair of parallel sides, we call it a trapezoid, okay? The parallel sides are called bases. We also then, if we have two bases, we call the pair of angles at the top. In the green here, we call this a pair of base angles. And then on the bottom, we call these two a pair of base angles. Okay, we don't know anything about them just yet. We don't know, you know, that they add up to something. We don't know that they're equal, but we refer to them as the base angles. There's two pairs. There's a bottom pair of base angles and a top pair of base angles. Okay, the two pairs that are not, or the two pair of legs that are not parallel are called legs. In general, we set the thing on a base, and so the left and right are the legs, but we could look at it in any orientation, so it's important that it's the non-parallel sides that we call bases. And down here, I just wanted to draw a couple examples. The, the second leg doesn't have to be pointing out. Everybody thinks a trapezoid has to look like this. Like, that's, that's not true that a trapezoid has to look like that ingot kind of thing always. Instead, the leg could be pointed the same-ish direction as the other one, but just not parallel. Or it could be 90 degrees, right? It could be a, you know, right trapezoid, something we're not really going to talk about, but a right trapezoid has two right angles here. Or it could be sticking out, like people most often picture a trapezoid. The key is that the two bases are parallel. So what we do know is that there's a 180 degree turn with any set of angles there. And we'll talk more about that in a sec. Okay. Um, sometimes it'll ask like, what shape is this on a coordinate plane? I just wanna remind you that you can tell two lines are parallel by them having the same slope, or you could use our um, kind of chapter three stuff about angle pair relationship. So if alternate interior angles are congruent or corresponding angles are congruent um, or cor if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, all of those angle pair relationships can also tell you that two lines are parallel. Okay. All right. So and you can ignore this stuff on the right. I'll just, that was an example I was talking to someone about. So an isosceles trapezoid is a special kind of trapezoid, same as an isosceles triangle. Essentially, it means it's symmetrical down the middle. Everything from the left is the same as everything from the right. That's kind of what the word isosceles is or implies. Um, in general, we define it as a trapezoid with two congruent legs, although that's kind of a, you know, weird definition because also everything else is symmetrical. So these base angles on the bottom are congruent and the base angles on top are congruent. In fact, everything across this center line is exactly symmetrical. So, you know, this and this is cut in half, this base um, and this base is cut in half. We even know because if I drew one diagonal here, well, everything on the left and right is symmetrical. So this part of the diagonal is reflected over here. This part of the diagonal is reflected over here. So we actually get that the diagonals must be congruent too, because like say this is length A, so is this. This is length B, so symmetrical on the other side, that's B. So actually we get that A plus B and A plus B, the two diagonals must be the same length. So really an isosceles trapezoid just means it's symmetrical from left to right, and all the properties come from that idea of that center line of symmetry. However, the definition we see most often is a trapezoid where the legs are congruent. And that's missing a lot of properties. And we'll kind of talk about that in just a second. So in terms of properties of a trapezoid, there aren't many, because all we know is one set of sides is parallel. So the definition is most of the information we have. It's got four sides and one opposite pair of sides is parallel. That's 
basically all we know. I mean, from there we can get, you know, that 180 degree turn, which we use really often, um, where the angle on top plus the angle on bottom must be must mean 180 if the two lines are parallel. But the only additional uh, piece of information we have is the mid-segment of a trapezoid. I'm going to go ahead and redraw this over here. The mid-segment of a trapezoid connects the two midpoints. And it's actually pretty logical and cool what's, what's going on here. So essentially, they're saying, okay, let's pretend we extended the shorter base longer. Okay, Here's the midpoint between B and C. So that means it's halfway over in terms of x, and it's halfway in terms of up and down, y, that's what the midpoint is, it's halfway over with x, halfway over with y. So I could swing this triangle up here and it would fit perfectly in place. And so more importantly than the triangle fitting in place is we have something that is halfway up and down connecting to something that's halfway up and down. So what you'll end up getting is something that's in the exact same direction. It doesn't get further away from either base. It stays perfectly in the center of the two bases, connecting midpoint to midpoint. So this line must be parallel to the top and bottom. But also, separately from it being parallel to the top and bottom, if the endpoint is halfway between B and C, and the midpoint is halfway between A and D, well then the distance will be halfway between the short base and the long base, right? If we just say halfway between this at halfway between this, what we get is the average length between the short and the long. So the two properties we get is that the mid-segment of the trapezoid is parallel to the two bases and it's the average length of the two bases. So just a quick example of that is if I know the top base is 4 and the bottom base is 10 and I connect a midpoint to a midpoint of the two legs, then I would just take the average and I'd say, well, 4 plus 10 divided by 2, that's 14 divided by 2. The average of those two numbers is 7. So we would get an average length of 7 for that midpoint or mid-segment. Okay. And we already kind of talked about the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. So really, an isosceles shape is just one that's symmetrical on the left and right. So the properties are, first of all, just like an isosceles triangle, we have this if and only if condition. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. But the converse is true. If we have a trapezoid where the base angles are congruent, then we know it's an isosceles trapezoid. So it's an if and only if condition. Um, and also, we talked about the diagonals too. If, an, if we know we have an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals must be congruent because it's symmetrical. So whatever part of the diagonal is on the left is over here on the right. And whatever diagonals up here is mirror image over here. So we get A and A, B and B, they must be the same. Okay, And that goes in reverse too. If we have a trapezoid where the diagonals are congruent, that must mean it's an isosceles trapezoid. It must be symmetrical on the left and right. Okay. So before we get to kites, let's actually practice a few problems with trapezoids. So find the angle measures. Well, let's just go through a couple of these. This is an isosceles trapezoid on 7, so I know the base angles are congruent, so this must be 50. And the most common other trick here is parallel lines mean that we've made a 180-degree turn. So that means 50 plus this bottom angle must be 180. So this is 130. Okay, and then base angles are congruent. Here's 130. Okay, I'm going to get to a little smaller here. So same thing over here. This is isosceles. So we know that the base angles are congruent. So here's a 100. Another way to solve this is say the total of a four-sided figure is always 360, right? We could do four minus two times 180, or just have that memorized. And we could always say, well, we know these base angles are the same. So we could say x plus x plus 100 plus 100 equals 360. Or we could have just said parallel lines make a 180 degree turn. Either way, we get 80 and 80, and nine is the same, okay? This is more interesting. Is this shape a trapezoid? Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, we know that these two angles are the same. 
and these two angles are the same, A and B and AB. Now, seemingly, it's just looking at this, I'm like, well, it doesn't, there's nothing about parallel. We don't know that they add up to 180, but do we? The total of the angles inside is 360, right? Every four-sided figure. And so look at this. If I cut this down the middle, those are the same angles on the left and the same angles on the right. So half of 360 is 180. Or you could rigorously say, like, you know, A plus A, if we just labeled this with some variable, and B plus B is 360. And just with a little algebra, we could say that's 2A plus 2B divided all by 2. We get that those two angles must be 180. Or just up here visually, we'd say, okay, yeah, half of that 360 is the two angles over here, and the other half is over here because the angles are the same. So we know that we've got a 180 degree turn. So that means that this top line is parallel to the bottom line. So this isn't just a trapezoid. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, number 11, we got 90 plus 90. That's a 180 degree turn. So this must be parallel. So yeah, this is. And again, we know that this is not parallel to this just by eyesight. But I guess if you were being really strict, you would say, well, this could be 90 and 90. But I mean, that's now we're getting to stretch. And same thing on the on the first one. Okay, now going over to 12. Oh, I've already drawn it a little bit. Sorry. Um, going over to number 12 here. We want to show that this is um, a trapezoid. See if it's a trapezoid. So we know that the top and bottom are parallel. So at least one pair is parallel. But a trapezoid says exactly one pair. So if the other sides are parallel, this is no longer a trapezoid, this is a parallelogram. So we gotta check is, are these sides parallel? Okay, well let's check. If I cut this in half, um, I know because the top and bottom lines are parallel that this angle is congruent to this angle. And I now have two congruent triangles here right by a uh, by i mean a a s right here's my first a my second a and my side being congruent a a s so i know these two triangles are congruent which tells me that this angle right here matches this angle right here right if the two triangles are exactly the same those must match and that means that Sadly, this side and this side must be parallel. So actually, having those two congruent triangles kind of spoiled our luck. So this is actually a parallelogram, not a trapezoid, because that's too much parallel lines. Okay. So down here, let's do mid-segment really quick. So we've got 10 plus 18 divided by 2. That's the average. That's 28 divided by 2, or 14. Okay, uh, let's look for one more really quick. Oh, I didn't put another one in here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually change number 14 to make this a little bit harder. What if instead the 21 had been here and instead up here was an X plus two? Well, we don't solve this any differently. It's still the same idea. We'd say, well, that mid segment is equal to the average of the two numbers. We're just gonna say the first number plus the second number divided by two. So the average of the two bases would be x plus two, that's one base, plus 25 is the other base, all divided by two is equal to 21. So that's x plus 27 divided by two is 21, multiplying by two, x plus 27 is equal to 42, Oh, whoops, I wrote the wrong thing there, minus 27. So we got x equals, uh, and that's 15. So I changed the problem. That's not the correct answer for 14 in your book, but just wanted to show you an example like that. Okay, so now let's talk about kites. Okay, separate shape here. Kites are like a rhombus. Um, except they're not a rhombus. Now, what a kite is, is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but it is not 
a, is not a rhombus. So it is specifically saying, okay, I've got one pair of consecutive sides that are congruent and another pair that are congruent, but they're not all congruent. Because as soon as you have anything else being congruent, for example, just up here in the corner, I'll say, okay, so if I had a different set, so like if I have these two congruent and these two congruent, and then additionally, I knew these opposite matched. Well, now by the transitive property, I'd say, okay, well, then I know that this equals this and that's equal to that and that's equal to that. So everything's equal to rhombus. So a kite is a separate shape where it stops short. It says, this is two sides congruent on one side, the other two sides are congruent, but not all sides are congruent. So there's two cool things to look at this, but the big picture here is that if you cut it in half, right down the middle, okay? So I can see that if I cut it this way, right down the middle, I get two congruent triangles, one on the left, one on the right, okay? And I know that by side, side, shared side is the same as side, side, shared side. So now I know if I cut this down the middle, then everything on the left and everything on the right is the same. So just to highlight that, what I mean here is, let's get like purple here. This angle is the same as this angle. This angle, whole thing, is equal to this angle, whole thing. This angle down here is split in half, and this is equal to this. In fact, this is equal to this, and since it totals um, a 180 straight line, then I get a 90 and a 90 and a 90 and a 90. This is equal to this. Every single thing from the left is symmetrically equal to everything on the right. So mainly, we know that the diagonals are perpendicular. We can name the vertices. So up here, we can name the vertices the symmetrical ones that you cut down where the top and bottom match, we call those vertex angles. So if you cut it this way, you're cutting between the two vertex angles. And then the other two angles we just call the non-vertex angles, okay? So the way we can say that is the vertex angles get bisected. That's this bottom one and this top one. Whoa, let's undo that. Okay, where did that come from? Okay. So also this one and this one get bisected those are vertex angles the non-vertex angles are congruent that means this one and this one are congruent the diagonal connecting the non-vertex angles is bisected so this diagonal gets cut in half okay and then um we're just going to go ahead and use those. I want to mention one other thing, which is just another way to look at this. Uh, there's nothing necessarily super special about it, but it can simplify it if you're comfortable with triangles. If you cut it this way, you don't get any symmetry, but you do get two isosceles triangles. And you know a lot about isosceles triangles. For example, if this is 100 degrees, you know the base angles of triangles are congruent. So you'd say, well, they add up to 180. So the leftover is 80 and the be split between the two, this must be 40 and 40. We can cut it in half. I mean, every, you know, isosceles triangle can be cut in half. So there's lots of cool stuff we can do when we cut it that way. Um, but it doesn't elicit new special properties per se. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a couple problems with kites. Um, here are some examples. Let's find some angles. Let's just do a couple of these. So I know that everything is symmetrical if I cut it this way. So I know this top angle and bottom angle must be the same. And I know the total is 360 of every four-sided figure. So I get 100 plus 40 plus my x plus my x must be 360. Using some algebra, we get 2x plus 140 is 360. Right, 2x is uh, 220, so x is 110, right? Similar on the next one, right? Again, I know if I cut it this way, it's symmetrical, so up here I must have a 110. Uh, I say the total is 360, so 60 plus 110 plus 110 plus x equals 360, and I solve. Similarly, 
cut this in half this way now, I get that symmetry on the left and right. So I get this angle and this angle match. And again, the total is 360. So I've got x plus x plus 150 plus that bottom angle of 90 is a total of 360. Use algebra to solve. Okay. And the main property we're going to use other than that is the fact that in a kite, because that symmetry is drawn here, you get that this angle and this angle are the same, so they must be half of 180 or 90. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem here to find these other sides. We can say, oh, well, if we have 3 and 3, then 3 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared, or that's actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we could get that that's 3 root 2. Um, down here on the bottom, we go, okay, so 3 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared, because we have a right angle here, too. So finding my c, we get 9 plus 25 is c squared. That's 34 is c squared. So c is square root of 34. Just wondering if I could simplify that. I factor it to be 2 times 17. There's definitely no perfect squares in there. Those are prime numbers. So that length is square root of 34, okay? And for each one, that's the case. The main thing is that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular, so we use Pythagorean theorem to find each of these sides, okay? And then it says use Pythagorean theorem and write the lengths in simplest radical form. Well, I hope you liked that video. Um, enjoy. Enjoy.